You know, when it comes to modifying our Jeeps, building them up and making them ours, it's important we choose good parts from the aftermarket. TerraFlex is one of the leading aftermarket component manufacturers on the planet. Let's take you guys inside TerraFlex right now. Let's go meet Dennis Wood. Hi, Dennis. Dennis. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Thanks for coming in. Welcome to our humble home. This is awesome. It's quite the, it's, quite the operation here. It's kind of fun. It's got the, uh, it's got the feel that, uh, like the Old West or something. Yeah, the old lodge. It feels good. It feels good. Perfect for Jeepers. So, TerraFlex, to me, as an end user, is a very unique corporation. Right? You guys manufacture some, uh, some amazing products. I run a lot of your stuff on my own rig. Um, tell me about how this stuff comes to life. I mean, yeah. we're, all, we're Jeepers, and so what is, uh, yeah. how, does, how does TerraFlex develop a product? When you come up with something new, walk us through how that works. Man. Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting thing because there's, all of us here are enthusiasts. I mean, you look at the parking lot and right. there's, we're well, enthusiasts, we're Jeepers. Jeepers. Yeah. Yeah. And so each one of us will find a situation where we find, oh man, if my Jeep would just do this, yeah. it would really help this situation. Sure. Well, we come in with that and uh, we talk about it and, you know, bring it into our design guys and that idea comes and, and also just talking to the customers our customer service guys over here are just uh, continually on the phone with people and they're like hey why don't you guys make it? we get people uh, all okay. the time that hey how about this how about that so it can be a customer phoning in absolutely hey I got, I got this I want my team to do absolutely. this absolutely so you guys make and I want to be real clear that uh, we don't pay for any of those ideas <laughs> okay <laughs> alright good to know let's just walk around the other side of this wall we've got uh, this is kind of a well, it's a display wall, obviously, but it's a bunch of our, our product. It, it serves a couple of purposes. We can we can see the stuff when customers come in and want to see what sure. we make, but also our customer service guys over here yeah. can come in and put their hands on, on anything. And when a customer has a problem or uh -huh. has a question, you can say, oh, yeah, I can see what you're talking about. They have yeah. that very part yeah. of their hand to play with. So. Nice. That's very effective. Yeah. Let, me, let me step over here, you guys, so you can see this wall. So this, there's a lot of... Brand new, and I recognize some current stuff. Um, the stabilizer and you new uh, um, arms. So, yeah. how does this stuff come to come you know, to fruition? You know, I look at this, and it's like it's like every one of these things has a story of you know why we needed it and, that, and yeah. why it needed to come about. Sure. Like these, this this new IR the independent rotation that IR bushing mm -hmm. um, bushings in in Jeeps have been the bane of everyone's existence for years. Yeah. You know, squeaky, yeah. wearing out, yeah. greasing. Getting elongated. So we worked on, we've been working on this thing for probably two, two and a half years, getting these things dialed in where we wanted them. Yeah. Basically, it just gives you that bushing that, that rotates inside. Uh, the sleeve actually rotates independent sure. of the bushing. So instead of having that rubber wind up and twist and every twist. time you hit a bump or anything, it's just smooths it out. Now we're allowing more flex, right? We're getting rid of that binding that typically would go on. And, with the and even at just at the right going down, you think uh, about okay. 16 bushings all I'll saying, no, that. don't move. Yeah. It'll, it'll firm up the right. Sure. You put these in and it's instantly, oh, I, yeah. I do feel that's a little smoother. You know, so. Noise, vibration, and harshness, oh, right? There you go. Dial it out with these things. There you okay. go. All right. So yeah, arms, little stabilizers. Um, all right, so you guys are manufacturing brakes now, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I think have. that's one of the first things when I began modding my Jeep, we put on bigger tires and wheels. We're adding weight with armor and all these accessories. Um, I can't stop it now, right? So um, tell me about what's going on with um, TerraFlex and braking. We did, uh, we've been doing the brake thing. We should, back in the TJ days, uh -huh. you know, they had drone brakes in the rear, so we had a disc brake conversion for the T shirt. Sure. Then we moved forward the JKs. Um, they had little small 12 inch rotors on them and uh, they just, like you're saying, as soon as you throw some big tires and you put it in low range and try to come off a hill, no, you cannot stop. Yeah. You're having to put it in neutral to stop. You know? yeah. So yeah. we said, all right, we got to get this in here. So we, we jumped up the rotor size, kicked those out. We started out with 13.3 and now we're, our, our newest version is 14. 14. That's 14. Yeah, those are big. Those so, are big. Yeah, so yeah, we they just kept getting bigger and that's just a mechanical advantage. You know, sure. you can you can turn a bolt from here and it's, it's kind of hard. Sure. You do it from here, you get all kinds of power. So yeah. mechanical advantage as well as the, the caliber changes. So nice. yeah, so brakes, obviously that's a, guys pulling trailers, over landing's big, you yeah, need to be able to get them sure. stopped. Yeah. So brake thing. Yeah. And I see your new um, tire carrier with the K 
camera in it. Oh yeah. The JL. Yeah. The JL. Just it down here. Nice. Just, just some that stuff that makes beautiful. it so easy to, to pull your tire off. You know, there's your, your brake light sits in the top of that. So gotcha. it's just a, just a quick release. The camera, your factory camera bolts right in. So just try to make it easy so that we can, um, we can have a product that a guy can bolt on, can easily adjust for whatever tire size he has. Yeah, the way you go. This is just gorgeous. Very nice. Yeah, that's a good looking part, isn't it? It is. When we first came out, people were like, what is that? They'd see it at the show. <laughs> yeah. you know, what is that? <laughs> it looks like something you made for the Army or something. Yeah. Okay. Fabrication is beautiful. And of course, your new, your new wheels. Tell me yeah, about those. The, that's, that's another one of those, we all got so Weird. sick of airing down. Yep. You know, I go to Jeep Jamborees and I see people over there with keys jamming their yeah, valves. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, if you <laughs> only sure. knew, if you, you know, knew. turn that and boom, it airs down to where you're at and tighten it back up, away you go. Nice. So and you have a rash ring available for these as well, right? Sure. Yeah. Very Bolt nice. Trim there. Air up from that one. Air downs. And those are 17s? Yeah. All yes. 17s. Nice. Yeah. It's some cool things. They're a tough wheel. I've been beating mine yeah. up. Yeah. And they seem to hold that for a while. Very <laughs> nice. Okay. Excellent. So anyway, so yeah, products come. Uh, we're the source. It, 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 we talked about where does this idea come from in yes. so many different areas, but but once that comes together, um, we have to we have to move it into the guys in engineering. You know, okay, so they're the, next, the ones that do the magic in engineering and yeah. start to bring these things dialed in. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's go look at engineering. All right. All right. We were just looking at some of the products up there, and we talked about how does this all happen. Well. We're right here in the midst of our brain trust. You can feel, you can almost feel the energy here. We got Jacob here. Our man Jacob's been working on our axles. And he's got, uh, he's got some 60s on you. It's like you have a 60 up on the screen here and a bracket you're working on over here. So uh, here we are again. We're just feeling a need. So this, this bracket is it's going to be for a front JL. Yep, that axle. Okay. Factory replacement. So just correcting steering geometry. There was a problem. He's got it fixed. And then uh, obviously we need 60s. You got to have 60s. You want to be a man or not? <laughs> so. so Jacob, explain to me uh, to the viewers quickly, how are you using this technology and what are, you, what are you getting out of this as you're designing? What does it allow you to do to be able to flip through this and, and look at these axles in 3D and, this, and whatnot? So this allows us to make sure that we match up to the OEM geometry quickly and efficiently, mm -hmm. and then also make our own cor corrections and additions and make things a little more durable and stronger. Excellent, thanks. Mm -hmm. Very cool to see Terraflex running solar power. So I imagine it, you know, it's, it's not without its issues of trying to get things to work <laughs> and play together, right? Nice. Oh man, it's, it's surprising how much things will change just, um, between a sport and a Rubicon, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, just when you're starting to say, all right, what size tire fits JL? Well, is it a sport? Is it a two door? Is sure. it a Rubicon? You know, sure. all these, all these things. Just different. And now with the so, new diesel, you've got you've got a lot of new know, things to. Oh yeah, they moved the gas tank. Right. The other side, everything yeah. got weird. Everything <laughs> got all weird. Def <laughs> unit in the back, you know. It's like, yeah. Um, okay. This this barn. This is this is kind of a. Uh, we call it the barn. This is uh, where they, they can actually make brackets. Okay. A prototype. They can bend them. They do a lot of the just actual fab work, weld the brackets together and put them together. So right here in the shop. Okay. Take a look in there really let's quick. Let's go take a look. Thank you. We we call this the barn, but these guys these guys actually get down and dirty in here. If we need a, a bracket prototyped, these guys will put them together. If we need. Uh, Brackets manufactured, they actually build them and put them together as well. So see they got going here. Big breast break back there. Um, just just all the fun. These are these big tubes are just they they take the fumes off when they're welding so that uh, protects these guys so they're not inhaling that stuff. So nice. So Dennis, am I understanding right when we if the an idea leaves engineering, this is this next stop yeah, to get it really into is. fabrication? Yeah. It really okay. is. Okay, Dennis, so um, what's this? What's next up? Our Navy. Our so this is, this, these guys, these guys do the, you know, those guys are making the brackets and yep. so forth. Those guys are drawing them up. When it gets to that point, these guys, 
actually install them. Because there's this, there's this reality check between doing it on a CAD and okay. actually putting it on yeah. a Jeep. Gotcha. So you have to go with that step. So these guys bowl them up, and it's, it's surprising how many different iterations it takes to get it dialed in just sure. right. Sure. So um, people are like, why don't you have that lift ready? I got my new JT, I we need it right now. Okay, testing. we want it right. Yeah, you know, you don't right. have to do it twice. So and that happens here. Yeah, so these guys, uh, all the way from the alignment system, so the alignment rack, um, you know, welding, kind of, you know, they, they can do all that stuff as well, but mostly they're taking a, a product that's been designed and sure. they'll fit it. And then the engineers will come over and the guy that's doing the drawing, like yeah. a, you know, a 60 under or something, yeah. he's making sure that all those brackets okay. are set on there, the right width, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. all that kind of stuff has to be dialed in, so nice. it gives them a, just a hands-on, make sure it works right yeah. here. Excellent. The real world. And real world. we also have... Our, uh, you know, we have a company jeeps that we use out at shows and do sure. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So they'll do the, the suspension system, build all those, and, right. and we bust them up. They'll fix them for us. You get to go out and so we'll see if you can break it out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Very cool. All right. R and D. It's kind of interesting because when we when we bought it, yeah, um, there was that building, that one, that wasn't there, that wasn't there, that wasn't there. So it was like five buildings, I guess. So. So we came in, uh, it's, it's actually uh, five acres of uh, cement. It feels like yeah. a, a Wild West station yeah. here, so tell me how so, that... Well, the guy the guy sold cement buildings, and so he had all oh, different versions, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you look at it, yeah, they're all they're all different, but they all kind of have that look to them. But he was demonstrating so, what you can do yeah. with, with concrete products, so, right? And we're like, yeah. oh, that works great for us. You this know, that's is, this, this is, perfect no, this is setting, awesome. You know? This courtyard is great. So much so, space you guys have. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, gives us room to yeah, do whatever these guys break check. I hear them out here break checking and stuff all the, all the time, yeah. you know. And so tell me, um, before we go see marketing, um, so what is your day-to-day -day like? Oh, uh, yeah. When you're here at Jeff, I know I yeah. bet you out on the trail. That was the first time we met, I've, yeah. and I've seen you wheel and all. But so when you're, when you're back here it's, at the office. It's really interesting you should ask, because I have a lot of people here ask me. What do you even do? What do, you do? <laughs> yeah. And how they say it's kind of offensive to me. Sometimes. Yeah. I, I like what if I'm not doing enough? <laughs> no. So, yeah, I, I, I'm involved in a lot of different areas. Obviously, we do the lame videos, you know. So right. We try to record our videos. We do that. Um, and Steve, he's, he's not here this second, but he's the, the our videographer. Your videographer. Yeah. Guy's genius. Production. You know? yeah. He's so yeah. much fun. We work with. Nice. You know, we do a lot of. He does great work. That. Yeah. yeah, he really does. It's great work. And then uh, I'll I'll help with uh, like product when we do the product descriptions and that kind of thing. So we got some, yeah, well. we've got some. Yeah, we got some really sharp guys that that do that, but they'll just say, "Is is this accurate?" You know. So yeah. I just bet around so right. I can. Yeah, that's how that works. So now, are you so marketing director? Do. No, I'm. They, I don't want to do, do anything have that title? hard. <laughs> I'm, I'm mostly, mostly think I'm just that guy. <laughs> just that guy. Okay. Uh, you see what show? Uh, isn't that 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 guy? Yeah, that's me. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, infamous. So yeah, I don't I don't have to do anything real hard. All right. Good they for wanna, you. They want to keep the load down on me. So. Good for you. Yeah. All right. Where to next, Dennis? Let's just go walk into marketing a little okay. bit and see some of the guys in there. While changing locations, I got to see the SEMA build raw, up close and personal. The fabrication on this build is unbelievable. Okay, just so um, I see this gigantic printer. Um, what, what goes on in here? So this is, uh, we used to have to, uh, take our jeeps out and get a wrap put on them yeah. somewhere yeah well it's always friday night the show's saturday you need to do it you're giving me can you guys do it right now no yeah. you know so anyway yeah, we sure, finally sure. said we can do our own we can develop our own we got graphic designers that just make awesome wraps we, so we do it all in house you do great wraps yeah. so uh, that's that that's a there. that's just a that's a printer that's uh -huh. a printer and a half but it actually Squirts ink onto the onto the stuff, you know, and, and then the wraps are coming off, and of they this. come off of that. Right off of that. And then that that's a cutter that that cuts them out, yeah. and then uh, right now, God, it's kind of a 
mess. We're just in the middle of, they just moved all the stuff off the shelves. They're cleaning all this out we so we can hang all of our uh, material on the wall and so nice. forth. So I was kind of in a rough moment, but it's that usually works. really nice in here. Amazing. This is the, uh, well, the photo studio. So we do, uh, we do some of our uh, videos back here. That uh, box, light box back there works really great for pull a Jeep in there, position it, angle it, get some good photos of the thing. Beautiful, yeah. So um, we got some of our display carts and stuff in here right now. So yeah, we'll just, this whole area we can use for just for all advertising videos, whatever yeah. we need to do. At the time of our visit, Falcon Shocks was just settling into this brand new facility. How did Falcon come to be? How did that start? And yeah, get these you know, specific... You're right, be. we worked with some, some great shock manufacturers, right. good stuff, you know. Uh, we just got to the point where we, we had our suspension, we said, guys, we need this shock to be valved a little bit different so that so it can do this spring, and that for that us. That kind yeah. of thing, right? Yeah. Right. For for our tuning spec. rides, we're tuning. Like, oh, God, we can't just do that. Few of shocks. For that, mm, sir. so so we like the only way we can do this is if we do our own. Gives you guys and control. I'll tell you what, making a that is a decision that's like not mm. taken lightly. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, like because as you guys can see, this was this in terms of capital investment is massive. What's going on here, at Terraflex? Three, so what, three three years, four years, I guess a year at R and D, you know, developing, so getting we're it all about together. The four year mark yeah, already, and then three years of actually producing. Yeah, wow. So it's, it's happened, but but. The, the thing is, is once we finally started doing our own, mm -hmm. um, well, like for example, this little this bench right here. What this is is a it's it's a portable um, tuning tray, so we can, we okay. can throw it in the trailer. They've got everything they need to do shock tuning. We'll so on site, we we'll, could take this out on the trail or on site and go. Yeah, we have trailer. We throw it in, and absolutely. Wow, I understand. So Fantastic. That is there. It's got everything in the air. So we actually did that. We went down and spent. Two or three weeks just in one. Once they got it dialed close, we yeah. went and fine tuned it, yeah. and just spent a week on site. You had a wee week of shock tuning, just just to fine tune the last yeah. little bit because it wow. took a month before that. So. How many? So how many variations of in this week uh, are you? It would. You pull the in. shock off. Mm -hmm. Do yeah, this, we, we try this. On, yeah, we start. We put a set of our, our baseline shock. This yeah. is what we have been using. Yeah. We like this. We don't like that. Yeah. What do we do to change it? Right. And so we put those on. We drive it. We have a little track. We do this. We do this. We do three yeah. different areas. Yeah. Bring it back, and then we throw on a set of Falcons. We go out and like, okay, that totally fixed the, the whoop thing. We're not yeah. bottoming anymore. Yeah. But it made it a little harsh on the high road, sure. highway ride on the way back. Let's work on uh, that. And then one of the things that just amazed me, I, I couldn't believe how much difference tuning makes in every aspect yeah, of okay. how your vehicle rides. Talk to me about that. So, What'd you so find? We, had, uh, we had a little section where it was just a washboard road where we would just make a turn. Mm -hmm. And one tune, you could make that turn and you were sliding off the road yeah. at, at five or 10 miles an hour. Just the next across. one, I could hit that at 15 or 20 and it just stayed on the road. It was just an eye opener to me. So it's all shock tuning. Shock tuning. Yeah. It wow. just kept it on the ground. Yeah. So that balance of getting rid of that JK or JL highway right. sway where you yeah. whip the wheel yeah, yeah. and they just rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a whole different uh, tail. Yeah, it's a whole different uh, philosophy on tuning. Yeah. It's more like a sports car tune that we do. A lot of rebound in. Yeah. It gets rid of that stuff. So that's why people put them on and go, oh my well, gosh, I know, feel it. Yeah, I run your 3.3s and an ability for me as an end user to yeah. tune for the trail. Um, you know, I live in Chicago and we come out to Moab, I'll set them on firm for the, yeah. for the interstate. Yeah, Locks yeah. everything down really nice, controls that body movement. It's it's been huge, but tell me how you got to corner specific on the Wrangler because I found that kind of fascinating. Yeah, it's not we just wanted a, to go to a bigger body on it. Okay. So the larger body puts it right up against the frame. So that's when we did that offset, that offset stud. Sure. So we moved it out. Sure. So that made it so it had to be left it's right. Be, and also the piggyback going with a, a reservoir like it, yeah. it's kind of a, a motorsports thing. They used to do them on side by sides and yeah. stuff. So yeah. we brought that into the Jeep yeah. market. And what that does is, it, number one, it gets rid of all those that leak hose. points in the yeah. hose, and the hose has a uh, like a size of a pencil lead hole in it. Yeah. And we're actually using a lot larger passageway that allows yeah. the oil to go into so that you reservoir more. more. So it's lower pressure. Yeah. And we're able to tune it easier. Sure. It just keeps heat from building up and yeah. all that. So, but it works well. 
So, and but the most important thing is they just look awesome. <laughs> That's true. They just look like so good. When, when you unlock They look like jewelry to me. Is what they look like. They look like some sort of fancy jewelry for your jeans. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so tell me about. So obviously, you have covered the jeeps, and we're going into pickup trucks, and we're gonna yeah. pan around and show you. So you have to have in house. You have to have a vehicle to test fit yep. to get this out on the road. So yep. every one of them requires hands-on testing, tuning, mounting, clearance, uh, you know, all of those things. Uh, yeah. you, just, you just have to have one. To, and it's another to, aspect uh, of that massive investment yeah. that's required Terraflex to produce something. Terraflex is still saying true to the Jeep thing. You know, okay. we're, we're true. Yeah. The Falcon side, we're, uh, we're letting, the, the Falcon side is branching out more. Mm -hmm. So we talked about the, you know, the F-150. Right. Oh, by the way, instead of Falcons on that F-150, yeah. oh my gosh. It is so fun to Game drive. Right now. It is yeah. so fun. <laughs> so anually, but now the tow rig guys are, you know, they're wanting to the tow rig. Yeah. So that's the you get that dialed in. Let's go to the bigger so, trucks. Yeah. yeah, the heavy duties, and they're all adjustable for weight. You know, uh, yeah. yeah. There's there's a whole lot of different parameters. To see what can you now. do to a three quarter ton truck? They ride like a truck. Yes. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, it, it's surprising because we'll drive it and then they'll put a set on and they get them tiled in and they'll say, go drive it and see what you think. You know, I mean, these guys do it all. They dial it in. Different, so the compression going through a, yeah. a bump, those yeah. uh, expansion joints on the freeway, yeah. you don't get all the body roll and all that. So. Yeah. It's nice. great. Impressive. What goes on here? Yeah, this is kind of a, these guys have their own little area here and it is that. well equipped. Yeah. So these are the guys, they, they, uh, they'll do one-offs. So they'll make, uh, they'll get the drawing done, and, and they'll they'll make the the mount, the mm -hmm. shock mount, yeah. or they'll make the the bracket, whatever they're working on. So they have the CNC mills to do it, uh, shoot the laser, everything they need to do. So yeah. these guys can can actually build the part for that yeah. first generation, first gen. yeah. you know, so first make it fit. Okay, yeah. let's change this. Yeah. So yeah. the engineers obviously draw it up for them, but these guys can just break them out here. It's, it's kind of cool. cool. This is super cool. Okay, so guys, we're here on the Falcon um, shock production line, and Dennis is going to give us a quick demo on how these pieces uh, are manufactured. So, it's, Dennis, it's just impressive. I mean, when you can when you can take a, a chunk of aluminum stock like that and put it put it in this single machine and have it come out to be a shock mount. Yeah, gorgeous piece of yeah, work. Yeah, just jewelry. Yeah, you know, so it's. Uh, each, each one of these machines has a purpose, some purpose in life, and uh, they're running these things. Uh, I guess depending on the load, they'll run them, uh, you know, two shifts or whatever it takes yeah. to keep up to with keep it. up with production. It's, all this stuff just barely got moved into this building, so so they're still getting things up and up and rolling. But one of the priorities, of course, is to get these machines running. Sure, we got to keep the shock production up. absolutely. So um, the Falcon shock line, how many how many vehicles is that? Uh, oh shoot! Are you sir? Designing for it. God, it, it's growing and growing. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've got all the Jeep products covered. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, the Wranglers and you know, and so forth. Sure. But now it's broken into the truck. So we got all the half and Dodge, Chevy, Ram. You know, uh, yeah. all those done. Toyota. Uh, and now we're now we're breaking into the big dogs because all the Jeep guys are like, hey. You're making shocks for my Jeep, and I love them. I want them for my truck, my tow rig, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we're doing so. them on the on the three-quarter tons and, and we got all them. those. So, yeah, it's, it's a process. It's amazing. Because it's not like they just, they don't just change your mount and put the shock in it. No, it's I can't imagine set up for each, crazy, each specific crazy. application, right? Oh. Well, this is amazing. Now, we're standing on this floor, you guys, and equipment like this, capital investment, what does this take to, to run an operation like this? What's a machine like this? Just ballpark for me. With the oh, you know, they they were. T I've heard numbers like ah, you know, it was it was seven million to get the get the machine. Well, there you go. And like, oh. We've got some noise here, but you know that that type of thing. This is to me as a as a consumer, mm -hmm. as a jeeper, is what separates you guys into kind of a league of your own. There's not a lot of places who can manufacture in house. Have, you know, a seven million dollar capital investment to do shots, right? That yeah, is truly yeah, impressive. Yeah. Amazing, <laughs> really amazing. It's, it's pretty cool to see it all coming together. Yeah. We started with one machine, and there was two. That just keep, and then pretty soon a new building. You know, yeah. it just kept growing. It's growing. So, hey, they work. People like them. I love mine. Amazing product. Cool. Right. Very cool.
It's quite amazing to stand in this facility and watch raw materials being turned into shock components. All right, now it's time to head over and watch a tech assemble a Falcon Performance Shock. So once these things are all put together, these guys assemble them, they hang them on these racks. This isn't just so they look cool, although they do. They look cool. They're all pressurized, and what they're looking to do is make sure that there is no leaking out of these things. They sit in here for 24 hours. I've said it once, and I'll say it again. There will be no shock sold before it's time. <laughs> so these things, if they see any weeping or anything in them, they pull them, and uh, they, they go through a QC. So. This is just the first step in the quality control on these things. To make sure there's no leaky, that's tight. Then we run over to another stage where these guys actually do a, a cycle. They check like 20% of them. They actually cycle them through. They check the- Just uh, randomly taken out of the production yeah, line and just, tested. And if there's one that's pulled out and it's failed, boom, the whole batch gets pulled back and checked every one of them. So Very quality nice. control is, uh, man, it's, it's a big deal here. Cause you know, you get your shocks, you don't want to be messing with it. You want them to work right off the bat. That's right. Inside each box, you'll find a hand-signed card by the techs who built your shocks. It's amazing to see what Terraflex is doing right here in West Jordan, Utah. To see production begin with raw material and end up as these beautiful Falcon performance shocks, incredible. Okay, we're here inside the Terraflex um, axle facility, right this? Right oh. And um, where the magic happens. This is where we're building those precious parts we all want on our Jeeps. You know, this, this axle thing with Terraflex is kind of interesting. There's a lot of people, yeah, yeah, we know Terraflex makes axles, but there's a lot that don't. It always amazes me. I'll be at a show and they're like, oh, I didn't know you guys did axles. I'm like, are you kidding me? You know that whole continuous radius design where you roll the cover up to give you clearance? That's Guess who you. did that? Yeah, Terraflex. Terraflex. Yep. And now it's an industry standard. Everybody does. That started with you guys. Yep. That was yours. Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. And how long have you been manufacturing axles? Shoot, that's axles clear axles. back, uh, would that be 98? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's it goes, been a long time. It goes way back. Yes, you guys have yeah. some experience with it, yeah. Yeah, we started out just making 60s, and then as time went on, uh, we did 44s, we did 44s for some commercial guys, and then mm -hmm. uh, obviously for the Jeeps as yeah. well, and then, yeah. and then the JK came out, and we started making Access or a Jeep specific housing, sure. so you could buy a replacement JK housing that you could bolt right under your Jeep that has all the caster correct. That's what I did on, on the axles. Yeah, yeah, it's just perfect. the perfect geometry, and you know, it was, that was one of the things I liked about it. Was yep. like you guys had taken all that into account. And now we're in the next phase, we've got the, the JL stuff, and it's you know, it's really close. We got the 60, they're just that's one of the ones you saw test fitting mm -hmm. in there, so. Just those and that then, was in jail. Right. And then we also got the front yeah. 44 housing as well. So. Okay. Nice. Good. Yep, yep. Yeah, this is crazy. This is, uh, when we do these things, it takes a mighty press to push these axle tubes in. We have an interference fit yeah. so that the, uh, the axle tubes press into the housing. Yeah. And then once they're in there, then we plug weld them. Okay. So there's, there's no movement. It's a seal and it's, it's, it's also a, a, just a tight. Yeah, so that you yeah, can't, yeah. don't get any axle 
a twist on those tubes. Twist it all. But that's, uh, these, these uh, jigs are all made up so they can put that housing in there, it lays it flat, the tubes come into it, it just pushes it in. More just on the press straight, now. It locks yeah. everything yeah. down. Yeah. So, yeah, there's the tubes right there. You're just looking How at long is it? Look, look at it. Yeah, that's half inside. wall. That's half inch, yeah. Um, how long does it take to build an asset? Typically, any idea? Oh, that's a good question. Because there's a lot of still man hours on these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, uh, if, if we did a 60, I bet if you looked at a 60, what do you think it takes to do a 60 from the ground up? Uh, if everything's rolling right, six to eight hours. TerraFlex's axle program can trace its roots back to competitive rock crawling. In 2000, TerraFlex developed the Terra 60R. In 2001, TerraFlex stunned the industry with the release of the CRD60. Many of the innovative features found on the CRD60 axle became industry standards today. Following assembly, the axles are media blasted to remove all oils and contaminants, followed by a chemical etching process, and finally a triple stage premium powder coat is applied. TerraFlex continues to be an industry leader with innovative design, engineering and manufacture of quality products for our Jeeps. I hope you've enjoyed this look inside TerraFlex. Until next time, stay safe and we'll see you on the trails.